folks. I am. Um, what date is it? I'm all confused with the dates. The 19th, I think. Two days ago, Paddy's Day. Yes, yeah, Thursday the 19th. So you're joining me here at Mentrum Lakes. I am. Um, and what I'm going to do today is I'm, I'm doing a review of. Let me show you. I'm doing a review of some pole floats uh, done by none other than Mr. Mark Davis. I don't know whether he pronounces it Davis or Davies, uh, so I apologise. But yeah, I'm going to fish the pole today. I'm on peg, which is now peg five, uh, pretty much first peg in. It's it's calming down a little bit, but I'm here since eight o'clock, and it was it was very uh, there was ice ice all over the place. The lake is frozen. No, the lake wasn't frozen. The grass was frozen. Uh, it's one degree here at the moment. So yeah, look, I'm cold. I'm either setting up or I could. I'm gonna grab a coffee now and. I made breakfast and I'll get back to you in a while. Uh, see you in a minute. There's eight permanent pegs on this side and I'm not sure how many on the far side. Uh, I plumbed up to this tree here. I'm not sure whether you can see it. the first one up the top of the hill. Uh, gonna fish. Gonna fish 13 metres. Gonna feed 11 at 11 metres. Uh, this is where I have for feed. So I have six blank balls and for with feed with dead pinky maggot and castor in it uh, and a bit of hemp. Um, so I'm gonna feed them and 
hopefully fish out. I'm not going to fish for long, maybe four hours. Uh, so that's my plan. Um, I'm here, I'm doing a review of these from Handmade Floats Company. Mark Davis, the lad's name is. Uh, and what I have on the rigs are of a two gram rig for fishing out on the deck. I have a one gram rig for falling through and I have a 0 0.08 for fishing on the drop I, and hopefully catch a few hybrids. There are hybrids in here. Um, skimmers, bream, roach, perch, pike, tench. Uh, so we'll see how we get on. I don't think I'm going to get any tench anyway, that's for sure. But I would be liking to get a a bream. It would be nice if I got a bream on that two gram rig. Uh, I'll fish that on the deck out at 13 metres and the other two are 11 metres. Um, it's a full top five, well when I say full, it's it's maybe two foot away from a full top five of a census uh, A74 power match pole. Um, and that's the top five is 18 foot at least anyway top five is about 20 foot but the depth is about 18 foot at least i'll measure it later uh, and see uh, my winders are nine inches so each double drop is a foot and a half so i'll measure it so every four is is a meter uh, and i had 24 wraps up. Maybe about 11 and a half metres there. Just beyond my feet. Pink bristle, two gram rig. A blue drenum bungee. Um, elastic in it. Um, I really was expecting that to go under straight away. Let me see where we are. Then a quarter past 11, so it's probably a quarter past 10. I don't think I'll put this back. So you see. I'll bring it into 13 metres, and it should be over depth there. I'm going to roll you out the torte in. A little bit baffling. I, I expected it to go under straight away. So, there's a little lesson. Expectations. Torn into resentments. Um, my feed has been out there a half hour. About. 
So fish should have settled on it. And the theory is right. Uh, Anyway, we're here to discuss the floats. Oh, I thought that was a bite. I went under. I uh, floats are sitting nice in the water anyway. This two gram float. I have a shot at shy of a, a number ten. Um and there's about a quarter inch of bristle sticking out. I'm sure you can, well maybe you can't see it, but it stays it, shot nicely, uh, and the float is sitting well. <laughs> it, it must be broke though, because it's not going under. I'm only missing. Look, I'm not going to give this very much longer. Uh, You can imagine with the lifting and dropping there that I'm doing that a perch would even have it. I don't want to actually lose feet uh, over the top because it's so deep. I want I want the fish. I want the fish down there. Um, but I will if I have to. I'll lose feet hemp over it. To instigate a few bites. I'm gonna try a different rig. Full depth of 13 meters. We've had our 11 meters, so. It's on a one gram float. Single maggot. No, oh, I really am expecting this to go on there. Floats are sitting nicely in the water. Uh, seem well made. I've been speaking to Mark a couple of times. Uh, nice guy, public service in the fire department. Um, So I'm sure he's busy at the moment with this coronavirus shit that has the world upside down. You know, it's a scary time in the world, especially for our older generation uh, 
how the media keep portraying as being the most vulnerable. Um, and yes, I'm sure the air they have obviously more health risks and underlying conditions because they're the older generation. But at the same time, we, I, I, I'm not even young, Jesus, I'm 52, but we as a younger generation and I suppose my kids' generation and his kids' generation, they need to be a little bit more conscious of that and stop fucking walking around like there's nothing going on in the country or in the world. Um, because there is, and it's the people who think they're not going to get it, or the people who are getting it. It's a bit like addiction. The people who go around calling drug addicts junkies are usually the next generation of drug addicts themselves. You know? Uh, and it's sad that they can't see this, and their image and their ego won't allow them just to do what's right and sit in. And I'm not saying all young people because that's not the case for a lot of them. are just walking around as if they're immune to this shit and they're not. And even if they are, they're gonna still be carriers and bring it into their parents, their grandparents, their kids. You know, you need to be clever if you have to get on in this world and do the suggested things. You know, they are only suggestions, but at the end of the day, you saw us pulling the string on your parachute when you jump out of a blade and airplane. But you're not gonna think, oh, I won't die if I hit the ground. You'll pull that fucking string. This is the same thing with coronavirus. Listen to what's being said to you. Wash your hands. Don't be touching your face, if possible. And isolate. Stay away from people. They don't want you near them. They're scared. So stay away from them. Say hi or wherever, but... You know, don't be going near them. They don't want you near them. On that note, I'm going to shut up and see what I can do here, you know. As I said, look, at the end of the day, I'm here to review floats. I, I am hoping to catch a few fish in the meantime. Uh, because I suppose, how can you review a float if it doesn't go under, you know. But they are sitting nicely on the water and you probably can't see that out there on the camera, but I can, you know. Uh, there's a black tipped float in bright conditions and it's sitting nicely. It's just a little pimple above, but I need to figure out what's going on here. So I need to stop thinking about the camera for a while.
I do do was start throwing. A little mug of, of ground bait in. Uh, and I've got a fish pretty much each time that's in the water. It's a scratching hook. Oh, look, it's barbed, so a little bit shorter as well than. The last one, so maybe I'll plumb back up there and see. Fish I've been put in now. Uh, I think maybe the ground bait just wasn't opened up. I also, uh, since last speaking to you, cupped in two balls with caster and just two one hand. Squares balls with caster in it and I've been loose feeding hemp over the top. Uh, being fairly steady. Except for when I turn the camera on. So maybe the fish are a bit camera shy. Float very nice in the water. I could probably do with putting a bit of bristle grease on it now at this stage because I don't think it's taking on water but it's sitting a little bit lower than I'd like however I can still see I dropped the biggest fish by not using the line on it. So, this is the longest I've been where I would have Cooking in there.
the shoulder. Yeah, that's one fish. When the fish are out, see how many fish will get off it. Of today was to do a review on these floats. I uh, think you can see them there, and to summarise it up, uh, I've not fished the strung out shot, and the best bait or the best uh, rig for me all day was the one gram rig. Uh, 20 foot of water. I've not had anything on the 2 gram rig. I've had everything on the 1 gram rig. Yeah, it's been a mixed day really. Uh, I've struggled for bites. I've caught fish one a bone. I've had lots and lots of days and I'll show you in the net at the end. Uh, I think I've maybe 86 fish uh, in about four and a half hours fishing um, <clears throat> I've used ground bait census black lake census gross gardens and census canal black canal it's been a very dark mix uh, and mixed with census uh, terror of the sun to get it down because it's 20 foot deep uh, the fish really wanted the bait it took me ages to figure out what the story was I thought I just wasn't getting bites but I think I put in four balls full of bait uh, and when I say full of bait you seen them there at the beginning there was dead pinky dead maga hemp and cast I went into them um, and also six blank balls went in and I left it for a half an hour getting bits and bobs going under and I put up to two gram rig and was full sure that I was going to go out and get the float was going to go under. Nothing happened. Nothing happened for a half an hour. It took me ages to figure out what was wrong and, and I thought, I actually thought I'd actually killed me swim with that much bait and was afraid to put it in and then I started introducing a little nugget of bait and I started getting the fish, you know. Now, granted, they were small, but I thought, at least I'm getting a few. And I done that, I done that for probably an hour, and I was getting fish, and then I made a bigger ball, uh, and I got a bigger fish. I was like, what, what's happening here? Um, and I put, I cupped in two balls then, with rich feed and I had a run of about 15-16 fish 
on it. Uh, and I still didn't really know what was going on. Um, and then that kind of died and I started introducing the little ball again and I was getting small fish and a bigger one hand squares uh, ball and I was getting bigger fish. And I, I figured it out there about two hours ago, it's not taking me that long. The fish are hungry, they want food. Um, and what I put in at the beginning was gone in the blade neck. So, there were, you know, there was only a few fish sitting there, sitting up over it. The fish were shot high up in the water, but they kept coming down for fish or for feed. Uh, it was just a strange day. Nothing, nothing I'd done consecutively produced fish. I had to keep alternating shit. And every time I put the camera on to catch a few fish, I couldn't. So I didn't know what was going on there, but anyway, look, I have a few fish. Let me get all this shit away and I'll, I'll, uh, I'll show you the fish at the end. Right. So we'll see what we have now. Oh, I don't know, there's about four kilo of fish there, about three, 86 fish anyway, they're all fairly small, um, look it's been a good day, uh, it was a bonus to get a few fish, the aim of the exercise was to uh, have a look at the floats, see what the floats were like. So there you go. Everyone a swimmer. Everyone a swimmer, baby, that's all right. Anyway, that's it for another day. Catch us on the journey. Good luck, folks.